once again, fellow Koi Keepers. Koi are a beautiful pet companion. Their calm movements bring a transparent effect to my mind, and it brings a very relaxing experience. Like any other pets we can have, Koi eat and then poop. And they poop a lot. These guys are like a pooping machine. <laughs> Here, let me show you. I've just recently washed these brushes. What you see here is some of the poop that collected in this part of brushes for the past 12 hours. Imagine the amount they can accumulate for say a month. It's going to be a lot. <laughs> now the poop when broken down produce ammonia. When the concentration of ammonia in the water rises, it becomes toxic to the koi. Starting on the weaker koi first, they become stressed and left on its own could eventually die. To have ideal water conditions for healthy koi, our target for elimination is ammonia. We do this via our filtration system. The frontliner for this job is what we call the mechanical filtration. This part of the filter is like a Gandalf the Grey. It's telling the physical waste in the water that you shall not pass. <laughs> However, even crystal clear water may contain ammonia because ammonia is invisible. To focus on our invisible target, we use the help of beneficial bacteria. Bacteria that basically will eat ammonia. Yes, ammonia is their food. So the more of this bacteria we have inside our filter, the more ammonia they will eat, which is good. To exploit the benefits of the bacteria and to make them multiply, we build them a house, or what we koi keepers call a bacteria house. Bacteria ordinarily will live on the pond walls or any surface in the water they can cling onto. Now, you have an idea of how bad ammonia is and how bacteria keeps ammonia level in check. I will show you now how I made a bacteria house from pumice stones and lava rocks. Vacuum is done. Pumice stones. Lava rocks. Cleaning time. Lava rocks. Pumice. Some more. Lava rocks. I'll show you now how to clean the pumice stones that I have in the net bags. I just use water from the pond, as you can see, I'm siphoning through. Just go to the pond. And this guy has been washed once. Those two haven't been washed yet. So I'll show you how dirty it becomes after or during cleaning. This is the dirt, the residue I got from sifting through the pumice stones and the lava rocks uh, several times. Yeah. So this is the reason why we have to go to the effort of sifting through them. This is what I used to bag the stones. It's called a net bag. It's very affordable. Um, like this one, it's 10 pieces for 100. Then what I use to sew it, to close it here, over here on the top, is nylon threads. This one is five. There. If you plan to do what I do. Okay. Okay, so the cleaning process for the pumice stones here and the lava rocks over here continues. 
I've been at this cleaning process for two weeks now. Still at it, but uh, hopefully in a few days they'll be clean enough for me. <laughs> uh, and then I'll put them on the filter changers. I just want to show you a close-up of the lava rocks. They're really nice. Yeah. Since they're inside these bags, if ever there will be a need to clean them, um, it'll be easier because you can just grab the bags out of the filter chamber and then shake them off and wash them with water and then put them back in. It's so easy. So here are the pumice stones. Now I'm going to show you a characteristic of the pumice stones. It's very unique to it. Here we go. There. They float. Can you see it? Pumice stones float. Not all of them. Uh, some of them, maybe, if you're lucky enough, you can get a lot. Sometimes I call them miracle stones. <laughs> okay, so because they float, that means there are cavities inside. And the cavities inside have packets of air. And that air causes them to float. So that pocket inside, those cavities inside, will be homes for the bacteria to grow. Which makes the pumice stones very very preferred as a biological bacteria house here I'm going to show you now my filter chambers so this is the first one the koi brushes then the second chamber the project chamber the one we did I'll just come back to that and my third chamber, the Japanese mats. And then there's my fourth chamber, um, crushed corals. I'm gonna show that later on. <laughs> Going back here to my main project, the pumice stones and lava rocks. There it is. As you can see, there is an aeration in them. I really like it. Uh, it's part of the project. So. Lava rocks on the right, pumice stones on the left. Okay, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it's off for a while. It's gonna come off now. I think I'm missing around 15 bags of pumice stones and lava rock. I'll just have to repurchase. And if you're interested in the size of my filter chamber, each, each is around 80 centimeters deep and then 90 centimeters long and 70 centimeters wide. That's the diameter of my filter chamber. Okay, I'm gonna turn it back on so you can see it coming on. To life. There it is. Again, this the the reader in this thing is powered by the LP100, and she's there working hard. LP100. There. These are the adjustments for the readers right here. Okay, there you have it, folks. Um, the project bacteria house. <laughs> Wait, baby, don't push that. <laughs>